This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. What is happening, everybody? Don't change your dials. This is not Jimmy Mack. This is Daniel Kuzer. Do not hang up. I swear to God, do not skip ahead because Jimmy's not joining us. Instead, I got Chris Wright. You might know him from the Currently podcast where we talk all things Casey Current and NWSL. Uh, but he uh, he's also a massive sporting fan and uh, shares a season ticket spot with me. So, uh, Chris, welcome to the show, buddy. I know you've been here a few times. What's going on? Thanks, man. Uh, I get to fill in for Jimmy, who's gallivanting in the UK somewhere, yeah. doing life. So uh, we don't we don't want to we don't want to give him any uh, any clout for gallivanting. <laughs> like we're we're all stuck here, and he's gallivanting. So uh, I I gotta tell you though, I don't see him uh, uh, skyping in. I don't see him uh, uh, calling in like Mister Mister Turkey did over here on currently. You remember that? Yeah, or Mister Cruise Ship over here. Um, you tried. It didn't work I out, tried. but you, you tried. <laughs> I tried. I was I was listening to you fools talk, and I was like, I don't think I'm joining at all. But uh, I did my best. Well, he, you know, he cannot be bothered with the pod. And I got to show you, that's commitment, man. So welcome. <laughs> Thanks. Happy to be here. Just burying, just burying my co-host right off the bat, <laughs> and building you up, man. He's gonna turn this off the second he starts it. He's giving you the done. rub. Don't turn off the podcast, folks. We got good stuff to talk about. Uh, it was a weekend in Major League Soccer. The MLS Cup finals are now set. Uh, Sporty KC released a uh, big old by the numbers uh, story on their website uh, about milestones and achievements this year, uh, which was kind of cool. We got roster moves. Every team had to submit them last week. And so we got some stuff to talk about. And then uh, we're going to see a return of international soccer to KC times two. So we're going to talk about all of it today. Um, But Chris, man. Good to have you, dude. It's weird. It's weird to see our sporting background here and see you. I'm like, whoa, what are you doing here? <laughs> well, without, without the games, without the current, or without sporting, like we don't see each other as much. So we That's pretty weird. much only see each other, you know, when we record. I mean, we still talk to each other, but like yeah. clean shaven. I like it. I dig it. Clean so shaven, different. right? I like All it. All right. So that to you. Stop fucking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, dude, I know. I noticed you've been trying to talk video games with me, and I'm like, Look at him trying to do friendship shit. I see what's going on. Speaking <laughs> of video games, I want to cut in here real quick because, oh. you know, Jimmy's not here to, to keep us in straight and narrow. We're going off yeah. the rails real quick. Yeah, we're off. Did you <laughs> did you see that Grand Theft Auto just released its trailer a couple minutes ago? Yeah, but I saw that it was also like like pulled because it was leaked, right? Wasn't it like, wasn't it leaked uh, uh, illegally? It was. And then Rockstar put it out. They're like, well... It's already going out there. They put it out on their their YouTube, so they forced their hand. When's it come out then? Twenty twenty five. Oh Jesus! What do we do? Yeah, it's it's gonna be a while, but it looks so good, man. It looks. I didn't no. need a trailer that far out then. That's just that's false excitement. Yeah, I, just, I hate uh, that. You know, I I do like the the old one though. I that's a game that even my wife could play. We'd get on there so, some night and we'd just take turns seeing how much of a wanted level we could wrap up and just seeing, try to see her get away in cars and smash everything on the way out because she's not a gamer. And she's just, just killing people on accident. Well, it's it's so funny because, like, you know, t- times have changed from the old Grand Theft Auto to now. Things that were appropriate then, not so much now. You know? So just to, like, interact with, you know, some of the old times and run over cops and, you know, just innocent people, stuff that you, you know. Yeah, it's different, but just shoot people on the streets. Ain't, ain't no big deal. Yeah. Unless the games. So. Oh, my God. Oh, well, dude, the, uh, uh, I've been on my Assassin's Creed bullshit is what I've been doing. I, all I can do whenever I see buildings out and about, I want to go climb it. That's all I'm thinking about. I'm like, I'm going to go climb that right now and do an eagle dive. It's, uh, it's a hell of a time, man. Did I ever tell you, again, off the rails, I went skydiving one time. And, well, and bungee jumping. I'm going to tell my bungee jumping story because it makes me think of Assassin's Creed. I was in oh Indonesia. I was in Bali. I was up on this platform, and I told myself, I'm going to do the most single, beautiful swan dive. Arms what? out. I want to, you know, I want this to be majestic. And I did. I put my arms out. I fell. I felt like I was soaring like an eagle. Yeah. I felt great. I looked at the video. 
I looked at the video and it looked like I got shot. My arms came in. I fell to my side. It was the single <laughs> worst bungee jump I, I think anybody could have done. But You're like, I didn't look cool at all. I thought people were just looking at me in awe, just like, look at that beautiful, you know, majestic Dude. sky dive. I look like I got stabbed yeah. and fell over. The wife and I watch a lot of Amazing Race, and they're always doing like bungee jumping and skydiving at some point in the season. And I'm like, oh boy. I, I mean, if it's for the game and I have to do it, let's fucking go. It, you want me to eat bugs? I wouldn't normally do this, but it's for the game. I'll eat the bugs. You know what I mean? You got to do it. We did it for dollar money. We... I didn't eat bugs, but okay. uh, y'all were y'all were eating bugs in that race, and it was think, yeah, was that race. Marissa and Vanessa? I don't remember. Uh, Marissa I think... was about to try some bugs, but then uh, our oh, friend, we... who was a man, came in and took care of it. <laughs> That's just, right. He, Neither he, did. He goes over, ladies, and he ate the bugs, and Marissa was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I want to quickly clarify: neither Marissa nor Vanessa ate bugs. Neither one of them did. Um, yeah, they're mad though. They wanted to. They're like, "Wow, okay, so how dare you push us women aside?" I was pissed for them. I was like, "Well, you should have jumped in, ate those cockroaches." <laughs> Competitors, those two, dude. Uh, man, how you been feeling since sporting wrapped up the season in uh, non-dramatic fashion? How's how's that been going? Tough. Tough pill to swallow, man, especially yeah. after the the way the game played out. You know, we, well, we talk talking about, sorry, go on. Oh, no. I mean, we talk, I don't know if we mentioned on the pod, but we talk privately about like that layoff, you know, that, that week or two week break. How will that affect them? And three they were, weeks. yeah, three week. Yeah. They're in great form leading up to that game. And they came out, they kind of look rusty, took them a while to kind of, you know, get their, their form back. And then of course you have that handball that wasn't, but. Hey, that and that's what everyone wants to talk about, right? We we always need to remember uh, that didn't that didn't really matter. They weren't going to win that game. We weren't putting goals in. We weren't getting it done anywhere else. You know what I mean? So, at very least, it might have went to penalties later on after a couple extra times. But there's since we since Jimmy and I talked about this last week, there has since been, um, you know, Peter and the staff have sent the video to like multiple uh, organizations around the world. And they've all but one of them have come back and said, like, that's a handball and a red card. Um, and even pro came out, you know, the professional referees organization, they came out and said that it was indeed a handball, should have been a red card. And I hate that, right? I hate that that they have to apologize for this because what good does it do now? What does that matter? Okay, we know you made a mistake. You don't have to admit it for us to know that. <laughs> it it kind of, it's... It it's salt in an open wound, right? Yeah. Like we know that. And, you know, going back to what you're saying, it may not have made a difference, but being tied, if we convert that PK and being up a man, yeah. you know, that, that could go a long way. So, you know, I listened to the Peter in interview and a couple things stood out. He said, you know, the team was not given the opportunity to compete. True. The referees took that opportunity away by not calling that. You still got to, you still got to play, I mean, right? They were still There's 11 on 11. Yeah. They couldn't finish. It is what it There's is. There's other opportunities. There's other plays to go get it done. And it just right. it just wasn't happening, man. And and they... Uh, dude, say we got past Houston. Okay. Well, then we're off to play LAFC. Those guys are scary. Yeah, they are. Like, that wouldn't have gone well. I, I fully believe that would not have gone well. Because, um, I mean, if, if you guys are living under a rock, LAFC is now in the MLS Cup Final playing against Columbus of all teams. And I just think LAFC is just going to sweep the floor with them. I mean, uh, that's where, that's where I'm at. And I, I'm, I'm going to watch it. I'm excited for it. I see that we're allowed to have flares in a stadium now. Did you see this? I did. I was surprised to see that. Dude, they, it looked like, uh, it looked like some kind of Chilean hardcore football ultras, you know, with flares. Cause you don't see that in major league soccer. Part of me loves it, though. Part of me loves it. I want to see it, but then part of me is like, "That's calm down, you guys. Somebody's going to get hurt. It's kind of inappropriate. I am, I'm, I'm torn. I'm personally it. torn. If there's a safe way to do it, I'm, I yeah. think I'm fine with that. But also, I'm like, y you got to enforce this. Like, how come nothing happened? Like, so that if this is okay, then I fully expect it to be okay for everybody. Because, I mean, people can't even bring smoke bombs sometimes. Like, 
I think Sporting got in trouble for like blue smoke before, so they had to go to the the confetti cannons and everything like that. But it's just, I don't know, man. Are we in agreement though that LAFC will beat Columbus Crew? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I agree. Feel very bad for Cincinnati. Just another uh, instance of a team winning the Supporters Shield and not making it to MLS Cup. It's uh, it's it's unfortunate, man. When they were the best team in the league, yeah, almost from beginning to end. Yeah, hundred um, percent. I do want to kind of, you know, well, we can kind of lament the season a little bit, but when you look at what Sporting did to get here, I mean, it. I kind of look back, and it all kind of started that Real Salt Lake game when they got an early red card, like right out the gate. And we had to win. We had to win there. And we did, right? Um, and then we came home to a decision day situation. You're like, got to win this too. And something else has to happen with some other teams. It happened. It worked out. Not only that, but we were hosting a game where we never thought was possible. And so now you're playing the knockout game against San Jose Earthquakes. That goes to an emotional penalty kick like, I was losing my mind, losing my voice to go to work the next morning. We win there. Then you got to go play the juggernauts of St. Louis and you crush them in two games out of three. We don't even have, we don't have to play the third game. And so I'm just like, this this season feels very much turn, turned around and it, it sucks it couldn't have been like that all, all year. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely correct. One thing that sticks out to me is just the grit and the fight of the team, right? They got three out of a total... There are possible 30 points in the first 10 games. No, nobody, nobody expected them. And what statistically, they didn't even have a 50% chance to make the playoffs until they did. So like nobody really expected them to, to, to make the playoffs. I mean, we had ups and downs. We had injuries left and right. DPs were, were hurt and, you know, it's, but to, to be able to have that mental toughness, to be able to bounce back, to be able to stick with Peter Vermees, by the way, who, you know, there was a ton of controversy, you know, with, you know, with this coaching spot throughout the year, but to stick through all of that and essentially be eliminated by some subpar play and a, a handball that wasn't called, whether we would have won or not, who knows, but to go through all of that, to me, speaks levels about this team and about this coaching staff right now. And it, it sucks because they, uh, you know, you wish... I kept telling myself, we're not even supposed to be in this situation. We're not even supposed to be here, House really. House money. House money. That's House what I kept money. telling myself, yeah. And I just, I was like, I can't be that emotionally invested because that would be, that would be irresponsible of me, you know, seeing what's happened all year to just all of a sudden be so hype and, and nothing matters more than winning. And it's like, uh, let's be realistic. I mean, we're not going to, I don't think we can take this thing to the end, but damn it, if they didn't make me believe a little bit. Um, do you have a favorite player on the squad this year? Uh, you know, I'm always Johnny, but I'm, I'm going to set him aside because he's kind of an easy one. Um, yeah, you know, I'm going to go Jake Davis. I'm going to go Jake Davis because I, you're a right back. I'm a right back. And I was a little critical of him when I filled in for you with Jimmy. I was critical because I was right after the, uh, the Miami game where they put like four on us, I believe. And Jack yeah. Davis is jumping, trying to like kick a ball with his foot over his head and gets burned down the sideline. And I, I criticize him for being a gambler. But my yeah. God, is he not fun to watch, man. He gives every ounce of fight. I love his mentality. To supplant Zussi, when Zussi, you know, was healthy, he could have came back. And it's like, no, 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 we got Jake Davis. Yeah. I mean, we haven't developed a player like that since what, Busio? It's probably the last time we've... Busio, I mean, you got to throw Daniel Shallowy in Shallowy. There too. Yeah. I mean, he's a he's a homegrown. Um, yeah, man, it's it's wild. I, I dude, putting that putting my hat on like that. It's uh, it's fantastic for me okay. seeing him do uh, seeing him kind of be have have a down year and then just kind of bounce back, but then get hurt, but then come back in guns blazing. Like he's he looks so calm on the ball. I mean, he's not getting down there getting headers on set pieces all the time. But when he gets the ball at his feet, he's so smooth for a big guy like that. And it's uh it's fun to watch him. Yeah, I mean, like you said, he's he's been in the doghouse from time to time and he still comes back, man. 
he's solid. He doesn't lunge. He doesn't do anything stupid in the box. He's right there to get a foot in, get a leg in. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy for him. Uh, before we hit our first break, I want to hit a couple uh, little stats here from the season. Uh, nothing to really break down, but we, as we all know, Sporting's the first club in league history to reach the MLS Cup playoffs after being winless in the first 10 games. No one's ever done that. So uh, it can be done. I mean, that just tells me if I'm another team and, I don't, and I'm winless in 10 games, I'm not going to hit that panic button because it's still freaking possible. Um, you know, we're the best team in the Western Conference from May till the end of the season. That's a wild thing to think about when there's just you take those 10 games away and we're the best team. Interesting, interesting. Um, what does there say, man? Tim Milia was obviously a beast this year. Jake Davis really came into his own. will be interesting to see if he comes in uh, and does it again next year, if that spot is still his. Um, you really want to get Logan and Dinbe back as fast as you can because that left back position was his, and now they're going to have to do some shifting around back there. Uh, Daniel Shallowy, clutch on the wing. Um Shallowy became the uh, third player in sporting history to have seven goals and seven assists in three or more regular seasons. He joins Precky and Johnny Russell right there. <laughs> pretty, that's pretty elite company. Pretty good company, man. Uh, what else is there to say here? Gotti Keenda obviously crushed it, man. I mean, he he really had a good little uh, little series against St. Louis. You know, Gotti Keenda did. Thing is, man, we're getting this core group back next year, all right? And uh, there's also some we're not getting back, and we're going to talk about that after this break. Thanks for listening to KC Sports Network. Make sure you download our new app. Find it on the App Store or Google Play. Just search KC Sports Network. Listen to me. Do you think there's still people that out here that uh, want Peter Vermees fired? Is that still a thing? It got awfully silent, didn't it? People stopped talking about it. I mean, it's like we all hit the panic button right away and, and got a little entitled and thought, you know, we're better than this. We deserve more than this. We pay tickets. We deserve good players, stuff like that. And Peter Peter would clap back a little bit. He's like, you're, what you're not going to do is call for my job. <laughs> that's, that's not okay. And I think he proved himself, so he had the last word, didn't he? Well, you know, if you're going to chant fire Vermes, if you're going to give him shit for going, you know, oh, or winless in the first 10 games, you got to sing his praises for the way he finished from May on, right? You can't do one and not the other. So I, I think Peter got the last word in this whole situation. Man, he's, Peter's a legend, right? He truly is. Uh, he's probably the single guest that we've had on this show where I was like super nervous to talk to him. Like, I didn't know how it would go. I was like, oh, man, I hope he's not briefed on some stupid shit I said or something like this. <laughs> he has an aura. He has an aura about him. Like, he does. I, I was backstage one time, and he, you know, I was with us, with some people, and we were chatting, and he walked in. He opened the door, and everybody just stopped talking. Like, yeah. it's just, there's an aura around him. It's, it's just up. how it is, man. It's like the boss is here, you know, dad, yeah. daddy's home, that kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, but he's, dude, he's a legend in this history. Uh, he entered in, he's a legend in this league, sorry. He entered into a tie for third on league charts with 11 playoff appearances as a head coach. Um, his 18 combined MLS playoff appearances as a player and a coach are most in league history. That's kind of a niche stat. Like, not everyone has played in this league that is also a coach, right? It's just so. to show how unique he is. Yeah. What he's given to this league. And cool. and he's now got a huge job ahead of him. He doesn't get to take time off. I mean, he doesn't get to break, really. Probably break for Christmas and that's it. But uh, we got roster updates, man. 1 p.m. this past Friday, we heard some things. And I uh, kind of want to break some of them down with you. The Which ones make us cry? Which ones make us roll our eyes? You know, whatever. Uh, sporting exercise contract options which means we picked up their option. Uh, on Steven Afrifa, Willie Agata, Robert Castellanos, Jake Davis, Danny Flores, Chris Rindov, Johnny Russell, and Remy Voltaire. Uh, Chris Rindov surprised me. I think they 
probably see a, a cheap defender in him, maybe. I mean, they, he doesn't make a whole lot, right? And they, they, they need defenders always. So any of those names stand out to you? He's probably a good practice player, and they see some potential, so want to keep him around. Sure. I mean, that all makes sense, right? That all checks out, nothing out of the ordinary. Yeah. I like that Afrifa and Agata are staying. I thought they both showed uh, little flashes here and there yeah, and could really come in and provide something different if we need them to. Obviously, you don't want Alan Polito to get hurt, but shit happens. Uh, Castellanos came on in some very clutch situations this year and really had to step up and put his big boy his big boy pants on when he hasn't really played many games in this league. Didn't he come on against Minnesota in the playoffs game? Yeah, when... Yes. Uh, uh, Rosero went out the broken nose. Terrifying. And we're protecting like a one goal lead or something. Like, yeah. It was crazy. I was, dude, that game, whew, that game made me uh, uh, get high blood pressure there. You got that couple names here that are interesting. Cam Duke, Gotti Kinda, and Kendall McIntosh are all out of contract with the club. They are saying that Sporting has extended a bona fide offer to Kinda. That's cool. Hope he wants to stay here because he could go shop, right? He could go shop around and go to the highest bidder. That worries me. He's a great player. I wonder if teams might be scared off by his injury history because he's not been the healthiest over a length of time. Oh, but when so. he's on the field, I mean, he's he's pretty creative and electric. Well, let's start spreading those rumors then. Like, you don't want Gotti Kinda. He's... Terrible, terrible player. <laughs> Sending mass emails to like teams in Europe or leagues in yeah. Europe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you like someone that uh that that gets injured all the time, go ahead. <laughs> uh so Cam Duke spent a few years here and you know maybe he'll get picked up somewhere. Who knows? And Kendall McIntosh was a solid backup keeper for a bit and got a good run of games. So I wonder uh wonder what, what that's about. Wonder why we didn't want to Keep him on as a backup. It just shows you how comfortable they all they are with Pulse Camp. Yeah, true. I mean, McIntosh, like he flashed at times, but he was just inconsistent. And ultimately, I think him going somewhere else is probably a good fresh start for him. Because if he was not gonna, you know, get many starts outside of maybe a, an open cup or something like that, barring an injury, yeah, then it's probably good for him to get a look elsewhere. True. Uh, and here's the hold the water works here. All right. Sporting has declined contract options for Roger Espinoza, Courtney Ford, Felipe Gutierrez, and Graham Zussi. Two things pop out to me here. Well, actually, I got commentary on all four of these dudes. I'll start with Roger and Zeus. Legends, dude. The guys, you will see their names on that sporting wall of honor. They they will be around Kansas City maybe doing stuff for the club like Beasler does with Blue Cross Blue Shield and Chicken and Pickle. You know, they're, they're going to be ambassadors, dude. They might maybe even go into coaching. I don't know. Roger mentioned real estate at one time. But uh, I, in my opinion, and this could be ridiculous, I think we've talked about how Roger will not play anywhere else. He, I, think he's been, I think he's been heard that he doesn't want to play anywhere else. He will retire if, when he's done with sporting. Zussi, though. Couldn't you see him going to play one last year if someone offered him the right money? Yeah. I mean, he's... Like Beasler a, did with Austin? He's a borderline starter in this league, right? I mean, I would he's still a starter in this league, right? Barring injury, he can still come in and, and play relatively well. Oh, yeah. He can still ball, man. Yeah, uh, Gorgeous hair. I mean, the whole reason I wanted to grow my hair out in the first place was because of Zeus. But seeing him over the years transition from, like, winger to midfield to right back. It's just been a, a, a wild career that he's had at one freaking club, bro. One club. I mean, he was at the height of his career in the U.S. Men's National Team in 2014 when I became a soccer fan. So I was like, whoa, this dude is this dude is him. You know what I mean? Do you know how many times he probably turned down other teams to come back to Kansas City? Like I remember when the U.S. National Team... In 2014, you know, it was over. There was a big, you know, kerfuffle about, will Beasler and Zussi return? And for the longest time, we didn't know. And they both eventually re-signed, but they had options to go probably in Europe, 
different teams in the U.S., maybe get paid more, but they chose to come back to Kansas City. Oh, yeah, man. It's uh, Do you think he's playing the long game? And he's like, do you guys know how cheap it is to live there? Like, <laughs> like no, I'm not going to go sign for L.A. What are you, what are you talking this house about? It's probably paid for already. It's probably paid off, I would imagine. I mean, this league does not pay their players astronomical amounts of money compared to other leagues around the world. They don't necessarily pay them, dude, and, and you don't get paid more in LAFC because it costs more to live there or something. You just don't. And that's why I felt bad for Ilya, man. I was like, we brought him to this country, in this club, and then he now he's got to go out in LA and pay so much more money for stuff. <laughs> that can't be good. That can't be fun at all. But he looks happy, so. Yeah, he's winning. He's, gonna change. he's winning will make you happy. Yeah. You know, one thing that sticks out for Zussi to me is not what he's done on the field is what he's done off right sure he, he's participated in auctions to like you know go hang out and you know fundraise uh, for the team for the, the victory project he's always doing stuff for the victory project he's always like offering his time um, his energy you know he doesn't turn down like a picture or an autograph I mean he just represents what sporting is and and you know we've been very fortunate I think to be able yeah. to follow his career from the very beginning to now, because he's one of those players that I've really enjoyed watching, right? Like you mentioned, I play right back, not very good, but I play it. So like I've watched him transition into midfielder kind of attacker to, you know, a, a right back. And it's, it's just been so much fun for me to watch and try to implement some of that into my game again, very poorly, but, but I don't know. He, he means so much to this club and, I'm just very lucky that we've had, was it 15 years, 14 years with them? Look, so it's pretty wild. Nothing lasts forever. And yeah. that's just that's just the nature of the game. Um, th- this is the worst part about sports. You know, you have your favorites, the ones you like seeing in videos, the ones you love seeing out on the field. Like it, people that, like the ones that you think you feel like you know them, even though you don't know them at all. Right. You know, they just feel like they feel like a family that you've just grown to love. Uh, I don't know. I hope we can clip this and then play that if we ever have Zeus back on the pod. <laughs> just come to love it, man. This just goes to show, like my story, your story. I'm sure thousands, the uh, thousands others have stories just like that about Graham Zeus, and he, and he doesn't even know it. So that just yeah, goes to show you the impact that he's had on everyone. And Raj too, man. You know, we we all know Low plays for Casey Current, his, his wife. So uh, it's not like he's he's itching to run off. You know, he'd love to probably watch her career blossom and all that. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh kind of the other names, man. You got you got to mention Felipe Gutierrez first. Hey, would you come back mid-season? Give us a little midfield depth for pennies on the dollar to what you used to make what you used to make at this club. Um oh, no, you picked up an injury, so we know we have an option for you next year or whatever, but you're you're gone. Or no, they were not did they have an option? Yeah, yeah. So that his option was declined. So it's just uh, it it sucks, man. I like seeing Felipe back. Uh, he just had that smooth feel about him, and he was he can hit shots way out the box. But when he got hurt, he just kind of disappeared again. I think where his career really kind of slowed down is when he got suspended. Because prior to that, like like you said, he was flashing. He was having shots outside the box. He was creative. He was he was a workhorse up and down. But once that happened and he got injured, man, that just really kind of shut his... What am I missing? Why was he suspended? Remind me. Gambling, I believe. No, that was Felipe. That was Felipe Hernandez. This oh, sorry. She is. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, you're right. Getting him back, I was excited because he played pretty well. He was a DP, wasn't he? A while back? Uh, Yeah, no, he was. Yeah. So, like you said, just don't don't give you two men named Felipe. You you just <laughs> you just run with it. I'll just butcher it. I was like, I gotta ask here. What am I missing? <laughs> yeah, it when happened. He, when he came in, though, he kind of showed something right away. I know. And got nice. and kind of never saw him back. Well, it was nice to have him. Um, and Courtney Ford. This is an emotional one in a different way than Raj and Zeus. Um, but here's a man in Courtney Ford that got hurt in Colorado and. And uh, got shipped out of Colorado, and then we, you know, take took a chance on this 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 lad from uh, Olathe, Kansas. So he was kind of back home. Uh, his mom had passed 
like the past year. So it's just been a real emotional ride. And he's got this drive to play well. And he, he played for a bit. He played for a bit. Got some got some uh, chatter about him. Like we were all talking about him. And then uh, got hurt, man. Just done. Season ending injury. And uh, nothing you can do about that. So now here he is working to get back and play. Now there's some good news. Peter had his end of the year conference and he mentioned they might be working something out with Courtney. Did you hear him say that? I did. I was happy to hear that. That's neat. He, he said, we, we don't know. We're hoping something can happen. So I'm like, okay, because that's not reported in this little press release I'm looking at here, which is kind of nice to hear it from the boss's mouth himself that maybe we'll uh, get that man back. I feel like it's pretty necessary too, right? Fontas and Rosero, if one of them get hurt, one of them go down, sure. something happens. You got Castellanos in there, but it's nice to, nice to have both. A couple options. Yeah. And Courtney's been working, on, you know, just really getting back and as a good person from what I hear. So it's nice to uh, have that kind of person in your clubhouse. He had a good training camp right before yeah. the beginning of the season. A lot of people were talking about him. It uh, this whole post really featured a, a whole big paragraph about Espinoza and Zusi. It didn't do that about any of the other names. Almost feels like not so much the end of the end of an era, but more like end of their careers. Like maybe they're like, "I'm done. I'm very happy with what I've done." You could basically say Roger spent the whole se- a whole career here. Like he yeah. didn't leave long for a wig in just a couple of years, right? Right. So, just wild man. But we got. Uh, you know, we got 24 players under contract for next year. Got more stuff coming up, of course. You got uh, uh, next Monday, the trade window opens. So when we record next Monday, we maybe we'll have some trades to talk about. Who knows? The next day after that is end of year waivers. Next day after that, free agency begins. Then the next day after that is re-entry draft stage one. Next week is silly season. It's exciting. A lot is going to happen in a very short period of time. That's for sure. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Well, closing that out, I want to talk about international soccer coming back to KC, man. Ooh, let's talk. It's It was just announced today, Wednesday. Today's not Wednesday. What the ass? Do you see what happens? I, I record it. with you. On Wednesdays. You're not supposed to be here. I mix up the fleet days. You don't even know what day it is. This is uh, what happens. I see you and I'm like, Wednesday, I'll be. <laughs> <laughs> Monday, man. Wow, I wish it was Wednesday. That would have been soon. Oh, yeah. Monday, they announced Children's Mercy Park is going to host, is going to host an uh, international match as part of the Copa America next summer, man. I think uh, uh, we were we we're listed in there among a bunch of different stadiums, and and a lot of these stadiums are better than ours and bigger than ours. It's it's just very interesting to be in that be in the same vein of AT and T Stadium. <laughs> well, we get two right. We get Children's Mercy and Arrowhead. And Arrowhead, yeah, Arrowhead's gonna have one. Uh, we do know the U.S. Men's National Team will be playing at Arrowhead July first, twenty twenty four. But the week before that, Sporting will be having two teams there playing that uh, haven't been announced yet. I guess the matchup will be determined this Thursday when the draw takes place this Thursday night. But that's June 25th. So uh, I got to ask, are we going? Absolutely. Yeah, we probably got to go. We're going. It just makes sense. Uh, Copa America doesn't come to our neck of the woods all the time. Conma Bowl stuff in general, we don't really see all the time. So you kind of got to take advantage of it and show that, you know, we, we, we want it here. We want it, we want it to be here. Are we becoming a bigger city than what we get credit for? I Obviously, sure Copa like America, that. World Cup. I mean, yeah. it certainly feels that way. Um, but even being a person that's from this area, I still kind of sell it short. And I'm like, we're just these little guys, you know, we're never going to have what they have. And it's just, uh, then we get a little something. It's very More exciting. Underdog kind of mentality, right? Yeah. We're still used to going up against like major market teams and for sure. Nice to get some stuff our way. And then get our asses kicked by the Green Bay Packers. It's just the whole time, man. It's a terrible time. The uh 
<laughs> I highly expect Nick to put into the chat that he's going to kill himself. That's what he says when his sports teams lose. <laughs> It, it, it's so dramatic, but it makes me laugh every time. God dang. Uh, so yeah, man, what, God, what else do we need to, what else do we need to talk about? Oh man, we burned through it pretty quickly. Is there any, su- burned. Hmm? is there any surprises about any of the roster news outside of, you know, Zussi and Espinosa, which really wasn't much of a surprise. I think we all kind of saw it coming. Yeah. I mean, that was just, you know borrowed time right like the clock was ticking you kind of figured that was going to happen you try to prepare yourself but it's still still hard kind of right i mean no not really surprises Uh, if i had to choose one i'd say maybe kindle mcintosh i guess but i i a certain wonder of mine something i'm thinking about is what did cam duke do because i used to get excited to see that man on the field he would be he would sub on and his speed would be outrageous and i just i liked having him and 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 my wife marissa has his jersey game worn jersey it's it's he just like a favorite player of ours so now that he's just out of contract and gone presumably we never saw him again man he stopped playing it wasn't that he was hurt either he was available it's kind of weird how that happens right like yeah out of all the i don't know we're up by a couple. We just need to kill 10 minutes or, you know, just something. Yeah. We didn't see him at all. Not even here. I mean, you know, Peter has no time for laziness. I mean, we all remember uh, uh, whoever, God, who was it that messed up and then got shipped out the following day? <laughs> oh, man. God, what was that? <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I can't. No. These oh. seasons meld together, man, and I forget players as quickly as I learn them. It's just, it's real tough. At least in college, any- sometimes you you at least are guaranteed four years with some of those players. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. Um, is, is there any player that you expect them to take a jump next season? What's I know this is preseason jump? talk, but like, you know, you expect them to to really you know go from I don't know like a a freshman to a sophomore jump or just go a level above. I mean, oh. he's Jake Davis. It's going to be Jake Davis. It'll be interesting to see if he has a sophomore slump or if he's he's the real deal, man. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's the one to watch. That's the player of 2024 to watch. Ooh. And uh, we'll just have to keep an eye on it. That'll be exciting. And I, I got to toot my own horn real quick for you. Earlier this year, we, we did a pod when uh, Jimmy was out of town. And we were talking about who's your prediction for, you know, sporting player of the year. And I think you chose you choose Johnny or Shallowy. I can't remember, but I picked Polito, and I was actually right for once. Uh, so I kind of I have to bring it up because I don't know when I'm going to be on here again for a while. Who knows? Oh so God. I have to bring it up. I'm never right. I mean, all right. Well, I got, too bad I we cut the feed. We cut the feed a long time ago. <laughs> Nobody heard that. <laughs> People shut it off anyways because Jimmy ain't here. Jimmy, <laughs> come on back to us, baby. Hello, oh. Queen. Hello. <laughs> uh, dude, let's get the hell out of here. We good? All right. Yep, we're good. All right, man, folks. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Um, I've I've been Daniel, and he's been Chris. Uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can go at No Other Pod at Dan Coozer at Chris Wright twenty one. Jimmy's probably got us on all the socials. Do you do threads? Go on over there. Jimmy's got socials we don't even know about. Do you know that? That's that's a real thing. Uh, do we have a blue sky? Is there a blue sky? We do have blue sky. Oh yeah. Okay. We have, if we have, if it's out there, we're on it. Except for My probably Trump. Yeah, well, we should be on it. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, send us an email at noetherpod at gmail dot com. Uh, we like to get those. Read them on the air. If you got any kind of off season predictions, we, needs, necessary things we need to do, uh, let us know. We'll talk about it on the air. So, for Chris, I'm Daniel. We'll talk to you guys later. See ya. <laughs>